When we think of 19th century landscape painting, we so often think of an artist painting plain air, that is, painting outside before the landscape. But that wasn't always the case. In the work of Caspar David Friedrich, his paintings were studio paintings. They were inventions to a very great extent. And that's certainly the case of the lone tree. Right. He did studies outside in pencil and then would compose a painting in his studio. It makes sense that these would be studio works because Friedrich was using landscape to portray deeper ideas, deeper meanings. So this symbolic landscape includes a lone tree. And what a tree it is, gnarled, anthropomorphic. It's blooming towards its bottom, and we can see a shepherd underneath it gazing at his flock. But as it rises up, it seems to struggle as though its top has been blasted off by lightning or a terrible storm, and it's struggling to just eke out a few leaves towards its top. It stands like a lone sentinel. It is ancient. Friedrich is creating this contrast between the ephemeral state of that shepherd, that one man's life, what, 70, 80 years, as opposed to the thousand-year-old tree that has stood here through wars and storms. We're certainly meant to look at the top of that tree, that most beaten part, where Friedrich has parted the mountains and given us an expanse of blue sky And so that's the place where Friedrich directs our gaze. Is it me, or am I seeing a kind of cruciform, organic, but nevertheless a reference to the cross? I think that's very likely there. And we see a church rising above a small town. But that church is tiny compared to the cathedral that is this tree. That is nature. Friedrich is pointing us to a kind of older spirituality. It's so interesting. When we think about traditional or classicized landscapes, say from the Baroque, we might think about the work of Claude Lorraine, who had so carefully constructed a kind of system or formula for the representation of landscape in which trees function as a kind of curtain that is pulled aside to draw us into a deeper landscape That is, trees frame the image. They frame the deep landscape. And Friedrich has done the reverse here. He's made the tree the main protagonist. The open spaces function as the frame for the tree. It is this move away from classicizing, although I I do want to note that the idea of the shepherd and the sheep is very much a, a classical element that we might find in a Claude. But it's also a Christian element, a shepherd and his flock finding shelter under that ancient tree. But even given that cruciform, there's a sense that maybe this tree is even older, that it has a primordial spirituality. Perhaps it had witnessed the Druidic traditions. This tree is the link back to a past that is awe-inspiring in its ability to resist the forces of nature, the forces of man, the march of time. Thank you.